eternal weight of glory. Verse 18. This is awesome. We quote the scripture. But you can see from the reading, the, you, can get, you can begin to see the import of the through meaning. Why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Can we just bow our head? Our Father, we honor your name. Thank you for the New Testament. Thank you for the New Covenant. Thank you for the Word of God that is in Jesus. Thank you for sending Jesus to us. Thank you for offering Jesus on the cross. Thank you for raising Jesus Christ from the dead. Thank you for making him to sit with you at your right hand. Father, we thank you. I ask that there will be an activity of the New Testament covenant. Will, the power and the force of this testimony will be engaged this night Amen. upon your people. Thank you, Lord, for the spirit that has been flowing in through your servants since from the inception of this program. Father, we thank you. We must thank you. So we are thanking you today. And I ask that every eyes will be open. You will help hearts to understand. I ask for the breath of the Almighty to take over this atmosphere and possess each vessel seated there. That Lord, there will be blessing, there will be sighting, there will be illumination, there will be impartation, there will be glory, there will be resurrection. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Father, we give you the glory. You will move us from carnality to spirituality. Amen. You deliver us from carnal minding to spiritual minding. You elevate, you will resurrect minds, hearts, everything that has to do with our presence with you today. That Lord will move to another dimension, will pass from death to life, will pass from mundane reasoning to spiritual reasoning. You will take us higher. You will raise us up. He raise us up. The Lord will raise us up. Like you raised Jesus. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Let there be a manifestation of resurrection power. Let there be deliverance. Let graves be opened. Let hearts come up, my Father. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, glory to God. I pray for understanding. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Quicken, quicken. Make us of a quick understanding. Make us of a quick understanding. Let there be quickening, quickening in the spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody shout hallelujah. Say, I am blessed to be here. Hallelujah. Uh, let me just begin quickly without wasting time. Um, <clears throat> everybody shout hallelujah, hallelujah. amen, amen. Uh, let's see it. verse 6 for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness had shined in our hearts you, this, is, this is glorious had shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in unveiling Jesus. The word face of Jesus means teaching Jesus. When you teach Jesus, you unveil the knowledge of the glory of God. Face means knowing, accurate knowledge. Of a person. So when you say the face of Jesus, you are talking about the accurate knowledge of Jesus. Another word uh, here that also strikes me, let's see verse 5. Apostle was saying that we preach not ourselves. That's why 
when Jesus has taught you, you will stop preaching yourself. You will be preaching him. You preach not ourselves, but you preach. we preach Christ Jesus the Lord. And ourselves, we serve Jesus. And we are serving you for Jesus' sake. The reason why we are serving you is so that Jesus might be made known. So the preaching of Jesus Christ is what the body needs right now. Preaching the person of Jesus. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm, not, I'm not hearing you say amen. amen. You see the way I am reading it. Verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. So our gospel is the preaching of Jesus. Preaching Jesus Christ. <laughs> you preach Jesus Christ. Continuous preaching of Jesus Christ. So to preach Jesus, what does it mean? Paul gave us an understanding, gave us a clue in six. When you preach Jesus, you preach the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Then four says, in whom the God of this war had blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest, you see that word, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. I, the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. So when you preach Jesus Christ, you are preaching the gospel. Hmm. And when you preach the gospel, you are disseminating light. You are bringing light. You are shedding light on hearts. Hmm. Amen. We have a lot of time because I don't think I have many things to say. The few minutes I have, the few things I have, we have a big time to teach them. I'm already prepared for pastor this year. Everybody shout hallelujah. <laughs> Not knowing I already I'm kitted for this year's school of this. Even if it is five minutes, we'll download. <laughs> One day before the Lord is what, sir? Like a thousand. A thousand is what, sir? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm not hearing you shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Pray. So we can see it that light is, what is it? Making light to shine is the gospel. Anytime there is no light, when I'm preaching and there is no light, gospel is not actually being sent forth. I want to say something or something that will happy our hearts. Just to... I'm also building on what my brothers, the ministers of the gospel have been preaching. Pastor came to help me and I really appreciated it. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Less the light. Let's see verse 4 again. If the God... Well, it, it won the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not. Less the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So when you preach Christ, you are preaching the image of God. You know, when you are giving Christ and teaching Christ, what are you preaching? The image. How God look like exactly. Amen. Or who is God. That's what you disseminate. Anytime you preach Christ, when you preach Christ, you preach light. Amen. Amen. And when you preach light, you shed image. And we all know that image is made by light. Image formation comes by light. Though that is science, what is being done is already in the scripture. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm not hearing you say amen. amen. To make an image, it's what? It's through light. I remember physics. When we're studying light. Amen. Amen. To make an image is what? Is by light. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Say it again. Hallelujah. hallelujah. So when a preacher is standing up, 
is actually making image. It's supposed to shed light that will cause a formation of a person, of the image of a person in heart. So there is no image that can defeat the blindness of the God of this world. Now, there is a God who blinded the hearts of men. Now, he's not an ordinary person. Who did it? It's called the God of this world. Now, the scripture used the word big G. Hallelujah. And there's a reason why God used the word big G. Telling you he is the overseer, is the controller, is the owner of blinded minds. So, if he's a God, you need the light of God to conquer a God. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. What do you need? The light of God to conquer what, sir? Hallelujah. Yeah, to conquer God. Because the work of blindness in men's heart, while they don't believe the gospel, is as a result of what, sir? Of a God who walked it. And you remember, anything a God walks is dangerous. It's not easy to remove. And that is why there is no any other preaching that can conquer blindness except a person. No matter how you do it, you can't remove the blindness that is in the minds of those who believe not if you're not preaching Christ. So inside Christ alone is the solution to blindness. Everybody shout hallelujah. So that is why the word gospel means good news. Good news against darkness. Meaning we, the news of removing darkness from the hearts of men. The news of what, sir? Of renew, removing what? Darkness. Out of where? Now it's clear, nothing is good to a blinded heart except light. So if you are not opening his eyes, you are not telling him any message. The only way you can make a blind man happy is make him see. That is the greatest need of a blind man. Pastor, all of the blind men that Jesus healed, they, that was their need. Blind Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you that I might receive my sight? When Jesus healed that man who was in the temple in Jerusalem, healed his blindness, they asked him, the Pharisee asked him, Are you, is this man, do you believe in me? Listen to me, I was blind. Maybe you don't understand what I'm trying to say. I don't care who he is. I was blind. You, don't, you all knew me that I used to be a blind fellow. But now I see somebody has opened my eyes. And you are telling me I should not worship him. If I find him, I will worship him. You can talk your nonsense. This man has he have been here for years. You people have never even opened my eyes. But somebody came. I just began to see. You don't want me to be like you? You are wicked. And when he found Jesus, Jesus said, he is Messiah. He said, where is the Messiah? I want to worship him. Jesus said, I am he. Then he bowed and worshipped him. The Pharisee went to meet his parents and said to him, are you sure this man was healed? Bon <laughs> blind, sorry, sir. Then the parent answered, he said, he is an old man. Go and answer. Now, there is a thick blanket of blindness hanging over Europe. It's done by the God of this world. And if you are going to check what kind of weaving it is, it was done through sensual education. Man has learned in advancement and has rejected God. It's blindness. Every other light outside Christ is a blind light. Remember scripture was talking about every other thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So what can exalt itself against knowledge? It must be knowledge. Yes. Knowledge. So knowledge is light. So what Satan is using as a blanket of blindness is knowing, is some knowledge. So what can remove the veil from the hearts of men is knowledge. Are we blessed, every one of us? Yes. Did you hear what I've just said? Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, 
I just want to say some few things, then we close. It's that a pastor not so, sir. Yes, sir. I want to be sure I'm on the right track. <laughs> Amen. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Can we see verse 7? But we have this treasure in what? In earthen vessel. Say, we have this treasure. We have this treasure. Where? In earthen vessel. Say it again. We have this treasure in where? In earthen vessel. Why this treasure? That what God is doing is in earthen vessel. God working out his image, not in angels, is <laughs> giving it to earthen vessel. Telling you that the image of God is superior to any category of angels. So what God is rotting in hearts is far beyond what he has wrought in angels. So what God is doing in Ethan Vessel is the work of making his image in Ethan Vessel. Is to mankind, is to mankind is these things allotted. Light of the glory of God. Light of the knowledge of the glory of God. Can you shout it, everyone of us? Light, say it again, eh? Light. of the knowledge of the glory of God. I'll be saying something. Now, I, I am gradually pulling you along. I'm going somewhere. Hmm. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm not hearing you say hey, amen. amen. Say hey, amen. amen. Uh, immediately light of the gospel shines in our heart. It means we are drawing closer to glory. You know, light shines. Shining is glorious. So when the light of the gospel begins to shine in our hearts, we are moving closer to the realm of glory. And I can tell you, one day shining or one day shine is not enough to completely make you glorious. And immediately light drop in your heart. Oh. When light has come to your heart, I'm talking about the accurate, exact light that paints the image of God in the face of Jesus. When it comes to heart of any man, the man has heart, the man becomes a carrier of what's of a treasure. And because of that, pandemonium will break. He will be perplexed. He will be troubled for him to vomit the light he has received. Why? Because without image, there is no dominion. Without image, there is no what, sir? Dominion. How do I mean? Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Let us make man where? In our image, after our likeness. Hallelujah. Let them have dominion. So without image, there is no dominion. So when God is transferring light of the image of his son into you, he wants to give you dominion. You cannot have dominion without the image. If you don't have that image, Nature will not respond to you. When Jesus called those fishes to come and enter into Peter's net, <laughs> that was dominion. Immediately he stood there, fishes of the sea recognized that one who has the image is standing. Even in a measure. The image Jesus had while he was by the seaside was an image of the first Adam. But when Jesus was raised from the dead, he has a superior image, which God wanted to give to man originally. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Not just dominion over fish, not just dominion over sea, dominion over heavens. So when God is giving you light, he's blessing you. It's a treasure in heaven vessel. It's a treasure. Where? In earth, God is sowing the seeds 
of knowing him, giving you light, opening you up. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And when he's doing that, what is he doing to you? He's giving you dominion. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm not hearing you shout hallelujah. hallelujah. But how? So when light is coming, that is what, what it means to be preaching Christ. When you are preaching Christ, you are removing blindness. Hmm, thank you. So you can see how Satan is having dominion over mankind. is because we are blind. The day our blindness is healed, what happens, sir? He will no longer begin to have the dominion what, that he used to have. And that is why he will bring opposition for you to live your light. You will be perplexed on every side. Just wait. You will not be despair. Even though you are troubled on everywhere, you will not be distressed. You will be perplexed. Things will come against you for you to stop your process of getting to dominion. If you can receive all the light, you find yourself dominating. Mm -hmm. Things will begin to answer you. Things will begin to respond to you because you are seeking light. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That was what Jesus meant by seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What happened? And all other things will be what? Hard there. That addition means they will come. You don't get me. They will what? They will come. Say they will come. What does that mean? They will, they will locate you. They will come. Because that is the order of God. God is in dominion and everything responds to him. He's not looking for them. They look for him. To him all lives feel after. God is the source of all things. God is the ruler of all things. How many of you know that light controls everything? From Genesis we all knew that light rules. He created the greater light to rule by day. The lesser light to what? To rule by night. You cannot remove yourself from sunlight. We all need it. Even when you spark, I don't want you sun. You still need the vitamins that sun is what, sir? Is discharging. Is emitting. Though there are scotches from sunlight. There are heat from sunlight that are not too good for the body. But there is something in sunlight. A lot of, I see white people wants to tan. Where did they get it from? It's sun. Sunlight. It means light is a ruler. Light controls all the things that are under the sun. Everything that is under the sun is under the sun. <laughs> it can be above it. Under the sun, including human being. It's light. So when Jesus said, I am the light, meaning I am the controller. So when God is giving you light, he's making you a ruler. <laughs> so we have to stay under the season of receiving light. And we will receive light until we're able to discharge our rule. We discharge our dominion as light has come to us fully. You find yourself, dominion will begin to find expression. It will begin to emanate. Please, this is where, when you read towards the end of that verse, for we walk not by sight. Let's see it. I have climbed up, I need to begin to come down. <laughs> Pastor. If we go further, we won't come down at all, sir. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
wisdom wisely laying the foundation. Hallelujah. Uh, my intention tonight, what is in my spirit is that God wants us to go home with a spirit. Hmm. That's what is in my heart. That, while I was praying, they, they need to go home with that spirit. Let it write in them. I want to write in them. I, I want to put in them the spirit of faith. Last verse. Why will look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen? Pastor was talking about faith sees. Hmm. He said, look at the things which are not seen. How are you going to look without sight? But meaning, use an unseen sight for the things that are unseen. Don't look the way the natural man looks. We don't look on the external. We look somewhere. We, there are things we ought to be seen as believers. We have been called to come and look. That's one of our greatest ministry. Ability to see what others and cannot see. Let's see. Why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are seen are eternal. If you want to be eternal, look at the things which are not seen. If you want to be temporal, look at the things which are seen. Many children of God gets me hungry because they don't understand. Like Pastor Shea was teaching uh, some weeks, some days ago, I get me at the convention that the problem was talking about if we judge the way the unbelievers judge, our hearts will break. We get angry and the unbelievers and marvel how they make it. God is their, Satan is their father. It will make the world work for them. Yeah. You are different. Things will not work for you the way it's working for them. Hallelujah. Yeah. So when you look at the situation around you, you think it's negative. That is not proper, accurate data of how life should be. It's a satanic program that was designed to shift the righteous from seeing the unseen. Hmm. You see, you become solid in life and you become rug, you become studied in life when you train your soul, your heart to see the unseen. Seeing the invisible is what we are called to come and see. Let me tell you, in the hallmark of the scripture, especially men, whom God will ever use yes. to lead men in their generation, yes. Yes. they were trained to see the unseen. Yes. Yes. Men who would dare take the challenge of seeing what the rest are not seeing. Hallelujah. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm not hearing you say amen. amen. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now a church becomes a powerful church. If you're able to see what those who are around you are not seeing, we become mighty, mighty churches. Are churches that sees what those who are around them are not seeing. Churches will become better. We ought to be better than our environment. The way we pressed forward in the spirit is to take the challenge of the unseen and move towards it. When we begin to press into the unseen, you discover that it will be better than the things that are surrounding us. You know why? The, the seen life is the strength of the God of this world. Do you agree with me? What did I just say? The seen life is what? Sir? 
When the life you can see, that is what the God of this world designed. And he did it to keep men bound. Hmm. He doesn't want them to move into a world of advantage. He is a spirit. If you offer Satan the whole of Bristol, he won't take it. He wanted to give it to Jesus, the whole of it. Not just Bristol, the whole world. And even kingdoms to come. Kingdoms that are behind. He showed him all the glories of the kingdom of this world in a flash and said, I will give it to you. He doesn't need it. He's looking for something else. He doesn't believe in them. How many of you understood what I'm saying? Everybody shout hallelujah. He said, it has been given to me. I will give it to you. If you can just bow. So he prefers worship. To all these things. Hallelujah. Scripture now says, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? So when you bow your soul to him, your soul is worth more than all the kingdoms of this world. What was he wanting? He wanted to kill Jesus. He wanted to murder him. He wanted to cut him off from God. He said, bow to me. And he was, he meant it. He wasn't playing. I will give it to you. So Satan can offer so much to cut you off. <laughs> I've not finished. How much is Satan offering men, Christian, this day? And he's cutting them off. Million naira, 500,000. We don't know what we're worth. We don't know our value. How God estimates your soul. I don't know, maybe I'm communicating to you. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm not hearing you say amen. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. amen. I'm not hearing you shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Hey, amen. amen. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say it again. Praise God. Praise God. Say hey amen. Say hey amen. Hallelujah. Why do we preach Christ Jesus? Why are we told to preach Christ Jesus? There's a reason. Why Christ Jesus must be preached. Preaching Christ Jesus. You see it from Romans to Revelation is Christ Jesus. We preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus. It means there is something about Christ that can never be finished. (laughs) It means you can't exhaust him. They call him the unsearchable riches. Christ is the unsearchable riches. We have to preach him. Paul preaching for decades. And yet he's still digging the well. Christ must be preached. Because Christ is the answer to darkness. Let me define it. Darkness is unbelief. Darkness. When you say somebody is dark here, meaning is unbelieving. That's when we say somebody who is not born again, what do we call them? Unbeliever. Not so. And those who are born again, what do they call them? Believers. Do you know, do you know what I mean? You believed when you got born again. Do you want to accept Jesus as your Lord? Yes, Lord. Then, pa, you become a believer. But meaning you are a believer. Meaning you are a believer. It just means you are a believer. You are called to come and be believing. You must not just believe and stay in one place. There are many, many more believings. Sir, you got in it, sir. There are many words, sir. More believings. It means we have syllables of believings that are compressed in that man called Christ Jesus. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. How many of you agree with what I'm saying? It means come and learn faith. Hmm. Come and learn faith. Inside Christ, 
or what Christ is made up of is made up of faith particles. Jesus is the faith of God. Now, faith is the substance of things. Hope for Hebrew chapter 11. Hallelujah. And the evidence of things not seen. Jesus is the, let's see faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Now, for by it, elders obtain a good report. Through faith, we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. So the things which are seen were made, were not made of the things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying us of, of his gifts. And by it, being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see dead and was not found. Because God translated him. For before his translation, he has this testimony that it pleased God. But without faith. Hmm. But what, sir? Without faith is what? It is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and what? And is a rewarder of them that what, sir? That diligently seek him. So we one of the, in fact, the greatest strength, the reason for faith is for to come to God, is to see God. So one would say, coming to God, you know, I told you about many, many believings. That's what it's meant for. If Christ is not fully preached, you can only start the race, you won't finish it. How do I know? Let's see chapter 12. Wherefore, singing, we also are compassed about with so great cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and sin which doth easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Verse 2. Looking unto Jesus. What's that? The author and what again? And the finisher of our faith. So we have our faith. Jesus utters it and Jesus finished it. So many of us started, we've not finished. We are called to come and finish faith. So we need preachings that will make us continue in faith. Paul came to the Corinthians and said, it's good for you to check yourself. Maybe you are reprobate. Yeah? Are you still, whether you are still in the faith, lest ye be reprobate. Check yourself. So you are all called, we are all called to live by faith. Hmm. Open to Romans chapter 1. Hmm. You agree with me. This dovetails with what I've been saying from the beginning, or it aligns the scripture rest on the rest. Verse 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it. Everyone that believe it. To the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Verse 17, for therein is the righteousness of God. When you preach it, you reveal what, sir? Righteousness of God. Reveal from what? Faith to faith, as it is written. What happened? The just shall live by faith. When you, if you tell God that one man is a superman, God will say, are you sure? Are you sure he's a superman? God, this man is strong. This is a strong, powerful, powerful man. God said, are you sure? Okay, let's test him. God will test you by faith. Hmm. Leave your father's land, your mother's land. Go to the land that I will show you. It's difficult for an ordinary man to obey that. Am I talking to you? 
That's an exercise of faith. Everybody shout hallelujah. I want you to move and go to the land that I will show you. Yes. <laughs> it's not easy to take your things and begin to go. That beats your imagination. You have no clue of where you are going. Then God say, that is the way I am doing it. Go to the land that I will show you. You know, some people know everything about their ministry before they start. I didn't know all about the ministry. We just start and he began to lead. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You see, God may even tell you about the hand. This will be this, but you don't really know the true interpretation of what God is calling you to. They only showed Joseph that he's going to rule the rest of his brothers. He never knew the what, sir. <laughs> He wasn't seeing the well that his brother casted him into. He wasn't seeing Potiphar's house. He never saw the prison dungeon where he was held in fetters of chains and iron. He didn't see all that. But that was in the syllabus. By faith, they bounded him. By faith, they cast him into the well. By faith, he stayed in Potiphar's house. By faith, are you getting it? God allowed the woman to tempt him so that he can be cast into prison. And when his time was ripe in prison yard, by faith they took him up. So he said, what is the meaning of that? Now people only see the good aspect of faith. Fig tree, come to me. You pluck it. If that, that is all you know about faith, you don't have faith. You have not started. Then it means you have not really obeyed the principle of faith. You only lop one-sided. You're on one side. And that is not what makes faith balance. There must be severity before faith is whole. There must be some other sides of faith. The whole lot of people are not what's that, considering. Now what we have called faith in the church, and amen, the spirit of faith, is I command it happen. I claim it happened. How many of you know that Jesus went to the cross by faith? Oh, yeah. eh? If Jesus never had faith, he won't go to that cross. He tested death by the grace of God. That's what the scripture said. Amen. He went there by the grace of it means Faith took him there. All I want to say to you today, I don't care. I don't know what you are passing through. Don't think that your prayers have not been heard. It is just faith training. You are passing, they are using, they need, to, they need to train you and implant into your system what is called the spirit of faith. Everybody shout hallelujah. Mm. Nine minutes more. Mm. Everybody shout hallelujah. Woo! Amen. I like this school of the spirit. I'm enjoying it. Amen. After you finish preaching, you are still fresh. <laughs> are we blessed? Can we go further? Let's see quickly uh, that same Second Corinthians. Uh, I want to explain one principle of faith because of time. Hmm. The faith I am communicating, the, the spirit of faith. I'm communicating the spirit of faith. The, the, the spirit behind the faith we're talking about. Now, there are different kinds of faith spirits in the scripture. The spirit of faith in Enoch, in Heber. The spirit of faith in Abraham, in Noah. The spirits, they have an attitude of faith. It's a spiritual ingredient. Faith cometh from God. Am I talking? Faith cometh from God. Are you getting me? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So anytime God breathes that seed or that substance or that spirit, when it enters into a man, the man will begin to, his behavioral pattern change. He will begin to do the unthinkable. He will begin to do the unusual. And he won't stop until that thing expires. And immediately you become a carrier of such seed. Are you listening to me? Satan goes for you. Satan is afraid of faith. 
all of you shout hallelujah. hallelujah. What did I just say, every one of you? Satan is of what, sir? Say it again. Satan, because faith is a victory. Hmm. No matter what kind of faith, it's a victory against, it's a victory combat against the challenging situation God wants you to overcome. Faith is a victory. Nothing's overcome the works of Satan but faith. If you say, God, God, I want to overcome this challenge, God will say, Can I let me give, bless you with a seed? Then He gives you the seed, and immediately the seed comes, there is a program in that seed. There is something in that, that seed has programming. Every day living program. As you begin to take steps, you find yourself coming out. You find yourself overcoming that challenge because God has already written to you, written for you, a program. So when he speaks it and it is five residents in your member and you carry it out, you are going to exercise victory over that challenge. I said, may you be possessed with this man. That's the aim of this school. That you come, you possess another spirit. Yes. Caleb and Joshua, out of nearly up to, is it two million people? They're the only one who survived that generation. Because the Bible says they have another spirit. They have what, sir? And now, don't have the same spirit with the world. Have another spirit. Have another spirit. Say it again. Have another spirit. Say it again, every one of you. Have another spirit. I would like you to know the challenge that the church is facing now. We need another kind of spirit. Not even the spirit that operated in our parents. There is a spirit of faith. Those who have done the gospel, did the exercise. We need to climb on their shoulders and see and receive our own seed. <laughs> if not, we can't use what they use to combat what we are fighting. Satan has become more vicious. Yeah. To overcome him, God has already provided us a seed. <laughs> and if we're able to get that seed and swallow it, and we do the biddings of the seed, we're going to beat the devil. Yeah. There is nothing that cannot beat the devil. There's, you see, there is no faith always is the answer. Faith is the answer always to Satan. Satan is a spirit. Oh, look at me. <laughs> Satan is a spirit. But Satan is powerless in the face of faith. Wow. Mm. Ask me why. Ask me why. why. How many of you know that God created everything by faith? So when you use faith, you are using the creative measure. No demon faith can deal with. Yes. I, you don't get me, sir. I say no what, sir. No demon faith cannot deal with. Everybody shout hallelujah. I'm not hearing you say amen. amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I will say, say amen. amen. I say there is no spirit that faith can deal with. Hmm. Romans 1 says... Let's see Romans 10. This is the spirit of faith. We believe. Therefore, we speak. Hallelujah. Because I believe. Now that thing is beyond. I am just saying. Because I believe, therefore I speak. No, you is not. You may be speak, you may be affirming with your tongue, yet you are not a believer. To actually be a believer, it has to be engineered. <laughs> it has to be worked. Somebody will find grace for to be able to believe. Yeah. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Because to know a believer, you can only tell a true believer when storm comes. Hmm. When you see the wind, you really know who believes. If you've not been worked in, if faith has not been engineered, you will not carry the spirit. 
when storm comes, that spirit will rise against to that storm. It is programmed for it to rise. All that we should be praying for is the implantation of that seed. The seed, the spirit of faith. I believe and therefore I speak. Romans 10 quickly. I'm resting. I'll close here. Brethren, are we in Romans 10? Verse 4, for Christ is the hand of the law, for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses described the righteousness which is of the law, that man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, say not in thy heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ up again from the dead. But what's yet it? The word is not thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. Now, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, Jesus is the Lord, and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is what? made unto salvation. Verse 11. As the scripture says, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Anytime you walk in faith, listen to me, you will not be ashamed. It's dangerous not to live by faith. You will be ashamed at the end. Please, it's dangerous to live like the rest of men. You will be ashamed. All of you shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I don't want to be ashamed. He said, many will be ashamed at his coming. When Jesus come, many will be ashamed. First John chapter 2. So that we will not be ashamed. What will cause shame? He will say, you have never lived like me. You've never lived by faith. Righteousness is when a man has done faithless. Hmm? You get me? Righteousness is carrying out faith instruction. What is righteous in God's sight is faith life. <laughs> when Abraham believed God, it was counted for him for righteous, righteous. Now, listen to me. You don't beat evil spirit. You can't beat evil spirit. You can't unwind darkness when you have not done faith. You don't... You cannot unwind darkness. The antidote to darkness is faith. Why? Because sin is opposite of faith. Yes. The real definition of sin yes. is something that is faithless. Uh, have sight. You know, am I communicating to you? Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. What is not of faith is sin. <laughs> So if you want to understand sin, sin means absence of faith. So somebody can be nice. God will call him a sinner. You'd be wondering why, why God, why? He's not a faith man. Ah, Baba Why are you doing this, God? He's not a faith man. I can't trust him. He's wicked. Put pressure on him. I will show you you will behave the same way like the rest. I can't trust anything that is not faith-based. Anything that is not faith-tampered is not trustworthy. Hello, sir. David slept with the wife of one of his subjects and killed him later. But God came against David hard that if David see a woman next time, Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm not hearing. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The way God came against David. Because if God loves you, are you do stay. I. God is a disciplinarian. Before you come to heaven, he will discipline you. When you see him in heaven, you remember that time. He, he will smile, he will smile. I don't want God to discipline me. So I deal, I want to always deal with my 
precious. Pastor, four minutes more, sir. Everybody shout hallelujah. No. <laughs> Pastor say, how did you manage it? I need to. <laughs> we are all changing. Everybody shout. Everybody shout hallelujah. We had our convention. One pastor, we told him 30 minutes. 40 minutes, they want to stop. He said, please don't try it, I think. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Lest I lose what I was saying. What did I just say? I was saying something. He's a disciplinarian. Now, look at Saul. Saul looked like an okay man. He never took anybody's wife, but God rejected him. Why? He cannot obey God. I can do things that are right before men, and I may not be able to carry out God's instruction. Can I give you another one? To give back to Jesus, they need a man of faith. Do you agree with me? You agree what I'm trying to say? To give back to Jesus, you need a man of faith to allow the process of Jesus' birth to come to earth. A damn cell must be with a wife. Now, it, in Jewish community, a young girl couldn't just say, I am pregnant. An angel, Gabriel, came to me in the night and spoke with me. They said, we want to see that angel. <laughs> According to the law of Moses, you have committed fornication. They will kill Christ and stone him to death with the mother. So Jesus has, God has to protect Mary with a male from the lineage of David. Look at me. Are you listening to me? Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And to get that done, they have to look for the finest breed. And the finest breed was not when Israel was ruling. They find when they were soft, they had suffered. They were under bondage. That was the time they had pruned heart. They find one David's son called Joseph. Look at me. As, Imagine you, your fiancé just told you. I'm talking, you're a fasting brother, fast. Suddenly, go phone call. Sweetheart, it has just happened. What has happened? Listen to me. Michael just call, appeared to me now and saying, Pregnancy of the call that I'm bringing somebody that will help the world. <laughs> and he told me he's going to speak to you. Mm -hmm. Tell him not to come. <laughs> I don't listen. Joseph was in love with Mary, especially the love that you, a girl that you love. That was a test of the heart. Scripture say, say it again. Scripture say he was a good man. Yes. Not is that goodness, look at me, is not goodness, nice goodness. He had faith. Amen. Fight the good fight. What is good is faith. In God's sight, nothing is good but faith. In God's sight, goodness, all my righteousness is like a filthy rag. Until God gives you goodness. When we say the Lord is good, I mean the Lord is faithful. Faith. Faith. Finally. When God raised Jesus from the dead. Look at this, my word. This is where I finish. When he raised Jesus, he was showing us a type of life we'll be living as Christian. You get it, sir? Meaning our life is different from the unbeliever. Every day we should be rising. We should be practicing resurrection. <laughs> Every day we should be living the way Jesus was raised from the dead. That is faith. How? Because that is the only thing that can defeat death. Because the problem that is accosting humanity is death. And any church that cannot translate faith life, resurrection life, can't overcome. Because this is the victory that overcometh the war. Even what, my brother? Our faith. We are precious Christians. Put your hand on your chest, child of God. You have a treasure in hectic vessel. Why? The excellency of power might be of God. Listen to me. Listen. Listen. 
When you're not hearing commensurate faith to what happened to you, when you get born again, you will not be rising. You're supposed to be experiencing resurrection every day. You know the way Jesus raised Jesus from the dead? Your soul must be rising. You must be living canal planes and being installed on heavenly lands from glory to glory, from power to power. This is how we make you. This is how you make a minister of the gospel, a treasure carrier. A minister of the gospel should be so possessed, should be so possessed with resurrection that you can call people to rise up from the dead. You can awaken them to a new life. If we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. That is faith. It takes faith. Why we look not at the things that are seen, but at the things that are not seen. This is where, this is what is called a new heart. A new heart. Say it again, sir. A new, new heart. is a heart that can take the challenges of faith. A good heart. Heart that will practice what a carnal man can do. Are you blessed tonight? When you begin to do that, it's, it is in your doing, you are saved. When you are not doing it, you won't be saved. It is in this doing. We've been committed, called to come and do things. Hallelujah. That the rest can do. I know what, what man can think. Eyes have not seen. Here has not had. The things which God has prepared for you to do. I say you will do them. Amen. And you will be stronger. Amen. Why? One reason. Evil spirit has boasted to God in heaven that man is flesh. He can't do what spiritual things. They, don't, they can't practice spirit. But God said they will practice spirit. And one of the ways is to close your eyes and live. <laughs> you, you are not seeing, you are living. <laughs> that is faith. You are, you are not seeing, you are living. How many of you know that your tomorrow is sure, even without prayer? You know, it's already settled. Amen. Amen. Don't think it's your prayer or your meditation that is making it. It is settled. So don't bother. Cleave your heart to God. And Sally, you'll be secure. I see a lot of security for you. Amen. Even in this. I said we'll be more stronger. Amen. Look at me. You see, the more we do faith and obey faith, you take the land of the hidden. Yes. Pastor, yes. Abraham was obeying God by faith. He was putting his feet on the lands of Canaan. God mm -hmm. say, anywhere your faith feet has taken, has tread upon is your own. Take your, obey God. When you obey God, he will give the hidden to you as an inheritance. Obey God. Obey God in your place of work. Obey God. Your manager will be in your hand. Obey God. Everything that surrounds you, any sphere where you step your feet, it becomes an holy ground. Obey God. Obey God. Obey God. You break Satan's hold. Obey God. All disobedience will be revenged. Amen. will be avenged. Faith is obedience. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Pastor, I'm sorry that I even come, I came about 10 minutes more. I'm sorry, sir. Tomorrow we'll do better. Thank you. Let's leave. Hallelujah. Faith is obedience. Hallelujah. Amen. Reverend K, thank you. Let's appreciate the man of God. That was... Um, that was today. There were a lot of messages packed in that. A lot of messages packed in that message. Um, it just actually resonates with what we've been hearing. Uh, you know, this morning, uh, Pastor was talking about the fact that, we, that God is a curriculum. <laughs> God, God is a curriculum. 